right. Um, who do I have from the jail? Zachary Ladd? No. Who, who's at the jail? I have a gentleman at the jail. What's your name? I don't think he has audio. I have a guy at the jail in orange. What is your name? Can you hear me? All right, Miss Adams, we let the jail know that whoever it is doesn't seem to be able to hear me. All right, so I have, um, and I have Phoebe Neer appearing on behalf of the people. So Mr. Goldstein, how do you want to proceed with Ms. Hannah Walt? Your Honor, there is another felony matter that's set up for an exam on the 6th of July. I think probably it would be best if we could get that matter to prelim, either it gets bound over or we can then put all the cases together or it gets dismissed and we can go from here on these cases. All right, Mr. Malaro, I have Ms. Rice present. So Ms. Rice, wanna come up to the podium? All right, this is in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Stephanie Lynn Rice, file number 21-20664, FH and 22-20716, FH, of Salvatore Malaro appearing on behalf of Ms. Rice, and I have Phoebe Neer appearing on behalf of the people. So, um, couple things. Miss Rice, um, Mr. Coast has provided some information on Monday, June 5, 849. Mr. Coast stated that Miss Rice had a swab done on June 1 of 2023. She, had, she denied the money to pay for it, but Mr. Coast did perform the test. Um, Miss Rice, um, just for future reference, small children, it's never really appropriate to bring them here. I understand. Um, the drug screen returned positive for methamphetamine, 1,121 nanograms per milliliter, which is actually at a dangerously high level. Um, she was here today for attempt to court sentencing for failing to call on a daily basis directed. Um, in this case, it's another violation. Can I speak on this? Not yet. So um, I had released her on um, a pair bond again. I mean, I've taken her into custody and released her before. Um, Mr. Malaro, I'm going to ask that Mr. Coast do um, a contempt of court warrant on the violation of drug testing, but um, due to the levels, um, I have some grave concerns. It would be my intention to take her into custody today. Mr. Malaro, um, I know that she will probably want to speak with you. Uh, judge, if I may. Yes. So I, I have uh, one more file. She's in the jail. And um, if, if the court's willing, I'd like to take care of that case. And then I'd like to come over and maybe we can get uh, some progress done on Ms. Rice's files, including what the court has just brought to my attention, so. Okay. All right, Ms. Rice, have a seat. Do you, do you guys want me in person upstairs for that too? You don't have far to go, so if you want to, yeah. Yeah, may, it, it might be a good no. idea, Phoebe. <laughs> I mean, you and Mr. Bellaro can chat in the jury room or something. <laughs> okay. I'll be over. And Mr. Coast, you could probably pop back in. Okay, sounds good, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Adams, could you have Mr. Coast come in, please? He was doing a drug test. Okay. He was doing a drug test. Oh, okay. He might be busy. Now. All right. So, Ms. Rice, why don't you come up and I'll we'll take care of you. All right, this is in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Stephanie Lynn Rice, file numbers 
21-20664 FH and 22-20716 FH. I have Salvatore Malaro appearing on behalf of Ms. Rice and I have Phoebe Mir appearing on behalf of the people. Darren Post is present, is our pretrial services coordinator who did administer another test today. So we are here on a couple things today. One thing we are here on is a sentencing on a contempt of court, as well as a pretrial conference on the underlying file. Ms. Rice is charged with aggravated stalking, which carries a maximum penalty of up to five years in prison and or a $10,000 fine. We were previously set for trial and now we are Again, set for, oh no, we are set for trial for August 1 for a one day trial at 9 a.m. So, with regard to first the pre trial today, Mr. Malaro, how would you like to proceed? Uh, Your Honor, I think if I understood Ms. Mir correctly, do you want me to do it or you want to? Okay, Ms. Mir is going to tell you what we're going to do. Yeah, so, <coughs> well, maybe, I guess I'll have Mr. Malaro correct me if I'm wrong, but. Um, the people are in a bit of a, uh, I guess, uncomfortable situation or bad situation in these cases. Um, in preparation for the trial, I did meet with some of my uh, witnesses, the victims in this case, um, and they are quite frankly just fed up with this at this point. And I, you know, obviously I could make them come in and, and testify, but at this point, I, I don't think they really want anything to do with this. So it does put me in a, um, a difficult situation. So what I am asking of the court is a bit unconventional, but um, I think their exasperation with this case and with Ms. Rice uh, does have to do with obviously the time delays, uh, the fact that we've been set for trial before, I think at, at even a year ago, and Ms. Rice has, you know, on a number of occasions failed to appear. She now has these new dr uh, drug screens. Um, so I guess what I'm asking for the court again, it's unconventional, but um, that I will dismiss these felony charges as well as the PPO violations uh, and ask the court to sentence Ms. Rice to the maximum on the contempt of court. Um, I think that that would accurately reflect the delays in this case and the fact that I do have to dismiss because of the delays in this case that were mostly at Ms. Rice's uh, uh, cause, uh, just her again not appearing, these positive tests. Um, and uh, that's what I would ask of the court. I don't know if she would plead guilty to those contempts or if the court would find she her guilty. She already pled guilty to Okay, the perfect. Of sentencing yeah. Today. And uh, Mr. Coase did advise me that the, the drug screen today was also positive. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Malaro, are, are you going to object to people dismissing the underlying file as well as PPO violations? Uh, judge, not no objection to any of that. The only other matter, only other issue is clarification. I did inform Ms. Mir that I would be arguing the issue of how much time. On the contempt court? It, that the court give. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, <coughs> very good. I will move to the issue of sentencing on the contempt court. Um, so I look through this file. I'm going to go through this file. Waiver. Discovery. And this has been going on for about two years now, and it's a serious case. So, um, Ms. Rice, we should be grateful that it's being dismissed. Um, let's see. Trial release order. Yes. <laughs> Are there new charges from this alleged incident that occurred the other day? So there are new charges pending in uh, in district court that have already been filed. I think it's a trespass, but I don't, it might be just an assault. I think it's an assault battery. Yeah. And then Mr. Coase advised us of an incident yesterday that may also have new charges. Um, those will obviously be dealt with in district court separately. Okay. Um, and I, again, don't want to dismiss these charges, but I think at this point, you know, it's best to move forward and not, not make Ms. Rice's ex and son testify if, if it's not necessary. Okay. All right. So um, with regard to sentencing today on the contempt court, are you ready to proceed to that, Mr. Yeah, yeah. All right. Do people have any position on sentencing before the court proceeds? 
Um, just like I said, I, I do think the maximum on the contempt of court would accurately reflect the delays in this case. Um, time is often uh, in favor of the accused, and it certainly has worked in Ms. Rice's favor in this case. But that being said, I, I think the maximum on the contempt is more than fair, given her number of positive tests, including today being positive. And um, given I, I could go back and see how many times this was delayed based on her non-appearance, but uh, as I don't have that figure right in front of me um, on both cases. And as well, that's not even counting the district court where she was had failed to appear and was arrested in district court before it was found over. So right, thank you. Mr. Malar, anything you'd like to say on behalf of Ms. Rice? It would judge. Judge, I have represented Ms. Rice almost since the time I started the public defender's office. So I'm very well acquainted with Ms. Rice and uh, all of her legal troubles. Um, <clears throat> that being said, Judge, none of this is an excuse for her behavior, but, you know, three, four years ago, uh, it's very, well, first of all, this, and I think this court's also well acquainted with Ms. Rice as well. Whatever happened prior to that is certainly played a great deal on her uh, emotion, how she handles things in an emotional level. And I think it, as we all know, when we let emotions take control of our uh, decision-making process, we usually make bad decisions. And uh, Ms. Rice is engaged in counseling and therapy and will probably need it for a very long time to help her get past that uh, area where she lets her emotions take control of her decision-making process. That being said, there are times where she is um, very, uh, she has some good attributes. One is she's a good mother. And I know that this court could argue and, and not actually argue, but state that how can you be a good mother if you're uh, using uh, drugs that you should be using? And there's no debate with that. But by all accounts, through her CPS case, which I handled, and through through today, her primary focus for the last three years has been her children. She has two. She is the primary caregiver. Um, the fact that CPS has closed the file on her shows that she's committed to continuing to be a good mother. That was quite a while ago. Uh, about a, 10 months, maybe. I think it was December, October. But uh, she has continued to make strides to getting housing, uh, getting the services she need. Uh, Guardian, the last time we were in on that case, uh, had no issues with her as, as her parenting skills. Uh, Ms. Rice faces many challenges, Judge. Um, and, and, uh, and, you know, she was in district court yesterday, and I was present for that hearing, and the judge, you know, spoke to her, and one of the things that's apparent is Miss Rice has so much burdening her children, uh, these pending cases, which I think if we can get them, if these are finally resolved today, will be a great help in getting her past that. Um, remove those stressors that uh, I think will help her life settle down somewhat. And she can spend more time focusing on her children. Uh, I think she um, tends to put too much emphasis on things and uses that as a, a way to justify some of her behaviors, such as not appearing in court, uh, not attending certain things. And, and I certainly understand the state's point of view on this and, the, and their situation, but I think this is a good re resolution. I think that... Um, the longer she's in jail, the more risk her children are. And so with all of that being said, Judge, and knowing Miss Rice and knowing that she actually has a uh, case, she has to be in district court on this assault charge this morning, yes. But I told her to come here first, and she did. Um, I'd ask the court 
to use its wisdom and fashion the most uh, appropriate and lenient sentence as to any jail time as it possibly can. That would be our request on Ms. Rice's behalf. Ms. Rice, is there anything you'd like to say on your own behalf? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you just go stand at the podium for me. <clears throat> Three years ago, when Eleanor was born at Toledo Children's Hospital, her meconium came back, messing with methamphetamine in it. And I have not, I had not touched it. I never touched it. <clears throat> and so they did a very extensive and intrusive test through ProMedica. Eleanor had zero withdrawal, zero. They monitored her for six hours. She had zero withdrawals, not one withdrawal did she have, none. Because I wasn't using that drug, but the drugs that I take through my Dr. Noble, and Dr. Noble told me and my case manager this in her office, they cause a false positive. When Memphis was born, his meconium came back with the same exact test results, but they didn't even go through what they went through. They didn't call CPS. CPS never got called because they knew that it was verbatim the same exact as Eleanor's. My kids will lose everything, and I have worked really hard to get where we're at. We will lose it all. When I went to jail this last time, I lost my daycare for my kids, which is why I had to bring them to court. I reapplied. I started all over. I started all over all of my stuff again. This thing downstairs that happened. I need to be able to fight that because it's not, it's a lie. I didn't put my hands on her. She put her hands on me and my kids. All right, so ma'am, I don't want you to talk about any pending cases. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everything you say can be used against you because this is a court record. All right, so don't talk about events that occurred on new cases. Say that for your parents. I know that my kids will be in foster care if I go to jail. I don't have anybody to watch them. Their dad has not seen them in over two months. I have climbed out of my trenches. I have climbed out of them by myself. I've worked by myself with them in tow. And we need each other and they need me. And I, I'm not using, I'm not using, I, I'm not using. Mr. Coast, um, you administered a test today um, to her, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And did she test positive for anything? Uh, test positive for the THC, um, amphetamines, and also methamphetamines. Okay. Now, we know she's on Adderall, but her levels were extremely high, so that would be more than and it would cause a positive right, test. Right, and to her previous test was a swab that was actually sent to the lab. I did talk to the lab. Um, it said the only thing that would make methamphetamine turn positive is methamphetamine. We won't do a false positive because of the Adderall. True. Like, All right, so Ms. Rice, um, back, now I realize that you completed a CPS case, you had your children <clears throat> placed in your care, and the case was closed in October. But what I will tell you, what I've seen is you go downhill since then. I'm talking now, not you. So on April 17th of 2023, I issued, there was a motion affidavit and bench warrant because you failed to call in the pretrial services coordinator. They were closed on a daily basis. There were no call-ins from 410 of 23 to today. It's date on April 17th. Um, let's see. I have... A drug screen collected April 6 of 23 that shows a positive test um, for methamphetamine. So then let's see, we'll go to the next one. On May 16th, okay, no, May 16th of 2023, you failed to appear for warrant on May 16th of 2023. It's a bench warrant. Um, let's see, this one was filed April 18th. Now we're calling. Let's see. Repair bench warrant arraignment. I have a failure to appear 
Bench warrant arraignment on May 16th. Signed by me on May 16th. I have pre-trial release order to comply with CMH recommendations and medications. And we've got multiple tests that were sent in on a swab showing your levels are dangerously high. So which no, my Ms. Rice, I'm talking. So, Ms. Rice, I have great concerns about your mental health, your physical health, and your just defiance from day one of the court's orders, and also a downhill spiral that I'm seeing in your behavior. Um, you know, court's orders are in place, and while I have great sympathy for your trials and tribulations, I also feel that you have taken advantage of that to some extent um, in trying to manipulate the court. But based on just the overwhelming issues I've had for you, with you and your failure to comply with court orders, you know, I think you got off very lucky today because the charges are being dismissed. But I am going to sentence you to court or to jail for 93 days. Please don't um, do my kids in your closet again. Please don't. Well, um, please don't. Get judge. credit for any time you've already served. Can you please send it? Give Thank me a you. try, please, no. judge. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. My kids are going to be in closet again. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I can't do it. I need to be killed. Can I get it? Can I pay? Please, can I buy the owl? Can I pay? I can't do this. Please. You're going to get credit. Please. This is why I don't go. You're going to get credit. Let me go, please. No. Please let me go. Okay, but I can't breathe. I can't breathe this way. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I need some water. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Please, can I have some water? I can't breathe. Oh, I can't walk. I can't walk. No, I can't. I can't walk like this. I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't talk to me like that. I can't do it. I can't. I can't breathe. You're not right now. I'll take it off. <laughs> but I've heard that for three years. Three years. Every time we're in court, I hear that. 